Hello, my name is Katie Freeman with Freeman Furnishings, and today I'm going to bring you the uh, episode three of the first mini series of the Maker Mom podcast. So we have Venice and Belinda with the Simple Goodness Sisters talking about gardening with your kids, and so this episode, episode three, is going to cover kind of the final and last things you need to know before getting out there in the garden with your kiddos and starting your garden this spring, especially one that will bring some goodies to add into those uh, mixed cocktails later on this summer. All right, so let's head on in to uh, Minisode 3 with Venice and Belinda, Simple Goodness Sisters. All right, well, I so one, I guess I'll share a somewhat funny thing about the herbs. So last year we bought like a bunch of herbs already started, you know, and planted them out in our garden. We had parsley and we had chives and we had all kinds of different things and like none of them like lived like after we put them in our garden. And then magically this year, like uh, right away when spring started, the chives popped up and the parsley popped up. So that's, that's been kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. A lot of herbs will reseed themselves and they'll reseed and, and you will learn a lot about a plant based on when it reseeds or when it starts to grow again, of like when it likes to. So that's something that I also had happen. My cilantro, cilantro typically doesn't like to be super warm. And so it, I got like nothing out of it and it bolted really fast, which is when it goes to seed and flowers. But then this year it came back, and so I'm eating cilantro now. Um, chives are the same way. Chives are a great one to grow. It's kind of like another perennial, depending on where you live, and it'll overwinter really well. Um, kale is another one that people are surprised. They grow, they plant kale, and they're like, okay, I'm going to get all this kale, and they don't um, in the summer. And then so they kind of forget it and neglect it. And then it explodes in the winter, and that's because kale is a it likes cooler weather. And so then they're like, "Wow, now I have all of this kale, and it's great, and um, nothing else is growing." So then all of a sudden they're eating a lot of kale. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a lot of kale chips being made that winter, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So you kind of just talked about it a little bit, but like um, besides seeds, how else do plants um, propagate? Yeah, so this is a great, uh, another learning activity for your kids is just to kind of show um, them the different ways that plants grow. And so I think, you know, when we're planting a garden, a lot of times we're kind of forcing nature in one direction or another. Um, And so it's a good opportunity to kind of think about, especially again, if you have older kids about like, how would this plant grow in the wild? Um, And does it reseed itself? Do, do, like with pumpkins, does it rot? And then those seeds go back into the ground. Like how does this um, plant continue to grow and reproduce when we are not doing it for it? So um, there's three different kind of answers to that. And one is seeds. One is um, from cutting. So a lot of times, you know, the, the little tip will fall off and then it'll plant itself into the ground. Um, and then there's uh, through the root system. So Um, mint is a really great example and like the other day we were at the park and I found some mint just growing Um, and so I pulled it up and I could show my daughter kind of what those roots look like underneath and you can see the little buds popping out and so you can explain that this is the other way that um, plants grow and spread besides just seeds. Okay great all right so we've talked through like what to grow so let's talk through where to grow. Um, so I'm going to let Belinda take this <laughs> on because she actually does a lot more of a variety of growing in her garden because she's in a small lot. So she kind of utilizes each different type. Okay. Yeah, I've never actually measured, but I think my garden growing area is about 10 feet wide and about 20 feet long. So I could have started growing directly in the ground and done, you know, like kind of raised rows, but I wouldn't have had a lot of space then to move a wheelbarrow around, like around the outside of the rows, or um, it's also lined on one side by a hedge and then the other is up against my house. So you don't really have like your maximum space for growing. So for me, doing raised bed gardens just made the most sense. 
And I also liked that I could kind of control the environment a little bit more. And I thought that as a new gardener, that would give me a little higher chances of success. Also, when we moved into our house, the soil was really improperly cared for. So I didn't grow, you know, come into like a good growing environment. I actually came into that side of the house was entirely killed off by Roundup because they had renters in the house before we bought the house and they didn't want to have to care for anything. And so they just had a landscaping company come in and get rid of everything. So literally just bare, sad, barren dirt. So had to build everything up from scratch. And what we did is took cedar and we made um, four by four cedar raised beds with uh, little four by four posts in the corners. And then, you know, like one inch by I think, you know, five or six inches tall cedar boards going around the outside. Venice actually did hers with um, recycled metal, sheet metal, that she lined with pieces of wood so that it, the edges aren't sharp for the kids, um, but made them in a kind of a similar fashion, although her beds are much larger. They also ha are on the farm, so they have tractors and stuff, so they're filling their beds with, you know, tractors, and so they needed a bigger space where they could dump the dirt into. Everything in my garden is powered by a wheelbarrow and a shovel, so mine are a little smaller. I also didn't want them to be larger than four by four because I wanted to be able to reach my arms um, into the entire bed. And I actually have some skinnier beds that are more like two by six, and those are much better for gardening with my kids. So when you're planting, you really want to incorporate your children, maybe thinking about longer, skinnier rectangles um, is good so that they can get in there more easily. But the key things you need are with either raised beds or containers like old pots. Again, nurseries sell five gallon and 10 gallon plants and they transplant those plants all the time. And so in the back of your local garden center or nursery, there are probably recycled plastic buckets, five and 10 gallon size that you can get for absolutely free to start planting in. All you need to do to make sure with what you're planting in is make sure it drains. So if it doesn't already have drain holes in the bottom of it, take a drill and add some holes. I think a lot of new gardeners get this wrong is that a lot of the pots they sell you at, you know, a garden center like Home Depot, for instance, they have spaces where you're meant to drill out the hole, but they're not pre-drilled and people forget to do that. And then they're Thing just collects rainwater or water that you're putting into it and it's just going to drown the plant so you need to make sure it has holes at the bottom to drain I, um, it's so funny that you say that because that is literally on my to-do list today <laughs> go drill I some holes. 10 new pots and none of them have drain holes so now i have to like get out the things and put drain holes in which is kind of frustrating but yeah i, I know it's <laughs> it's really common that they do that um you also want to consider that um, you have enough soil to fill this pot. So I've also seen where people do it the other way. They make it way too big to start. And they're like, I'm going to grow in this old bathtub or something. But then they don't have enough soil to put in. And again, a bathtub doesn't have them, so it doesn't drain super well. So get creative with what you're using, but make sure it has drainage and that it's a manageable size for you to really use. I also would recommend you can move it preferably. Um, so unless you're really confident on your location, something like, you know, a 600 pound enamel bathtub is maybe not what I would grow in, which is a mistake that we made on the farm um, growing mint in old bathtubs. It was so cute. It looked adorable, but the mint likes to spread a lot more than that bathtub allowed it to. And so it actually ended up choking the mint um, and it just didn't work well. So Make sure that your container drains. Preferably, you can move it if you need to, um, if you need it to get a little more sun, or you sometimes want to be able to move it indoors to overwinter. There are some plants that you can actually bring inside when it starts to get cold. And so when you're considering your containers, maybe think of that. Um, you'll have less soil in a smaller container, and so it's going to heat up faster, which is great for especially crops that love high heat like peppers and tomatoes but it also means that you're going to need to water them more frequently some people have you know there's all kinds of things you can buy at garden centers for the watering in containers problem right like little water dispensers that will do it for you or um, a watering can certainly works and it's a good chore for a kid to have to go out and water daily and it's really fun to decorate your containers too. make it an art project for kids they can 
you know, glue things onto them or paint them or, you know, make it kind of fun to decorate the containers, especially if you've set one aside that's just theirs to use. Um, I would definitely give them the chance to make it their own. Um, with the raised beds, the biggest thing, again, is water resistant materials and drainage. So you want to make sure that the wood you're using, especially a lot of people will try to use like I don't know, like a pine or something that they have left over at their house. And it's not really built for our climate, at least in the outdoors. And so you're going to spend a bunch of time and maybe a little bit of money putting together garden beds that won't last you more than one or two seasons. So if you can save up and use um, a treated wood, if you have a cedar, which is what we did because we wanted to be doing, you know, more organic gardening, then our beds will last us, you know, for 10 plus years probably. And then you can certainly grow in the ground. Um, and that's what Manise does at the farm. So I'll let you chat about that, Nice. Yeah, so in the ground is great if you have the space for it. Um, so the biggest obstacle of growing in the ground and why most people move to raised beds is because you'll have a weed issue. Um, if you are, so where we grow used to be pasture. So we get a lot of pasture grasses that like to poke up. And so our um, in-ground area is almost completely covered in plastic. And then I put holes in the plastic and then I plant inside those holes. Um, there's only one of me and about an acre of crops and so there's no way that I could weed that by hand and but it's not quite big enough space to warrant all of the tractor work that would be involved um, that's typically seen on a much larger farm. So um, either cover, covering with plastic and we use a plastic that um, Unfortunately, they don't sell at hardware stores because what they sell at the hardware store is usually pretty flimsy and it tears super easily. Um, and so we actually buy it from typically like landscape supply stores. Um, and it's rather than like cut a hole in the plastic, we have to burn a hole in the plastic, but that keeps that hole there. And that plastic can re be reused for about 10 years. So um, it's great, but it is definitely an investment and an investment that most families wouldn't use for their raised garden or for their gardens. And so that's why they usually will go to a raised bed. Um, the other thing that you can do though, is you can use a number of different other kinds of mulches. So um, you can use, there's um, a lot of people are using like wood chips, uh, which is great. We have actually a lot of wood chips around here. So it's fairly easy to find. Um, you can, some people will use like newspaper, um, you can use cardboard boxes. I've seen some people use like carpet, old carpet. Um, I don't know what kind of chemicals are leaching into your ground at that point, but it would work, I imagine. Um, and so there's a bunch of different things you can put kind of around your plants and in your rows. Hold on just a second. Sorry. Um, good. <laughs> so, uh, and then the other thing is to give your space in between your rows. So I think a lot of people forget about this, um, especially if you're growing something like pumpkins, that plant is going to grow big and then it's going to grow wide. And if you have little feet tromping in those rows, it's going to be hard for them to maneuver. So we would really only suggest you plant direct in the ground if you have a lot of space. Otherwise, I would go with either container gardening or raised beds. Um, the other thing is water. So if you have a lot of people will use overhead watering, um, which is great for some plants. They don't like to be watered overheads so like pumpkins is one. They'll get um, powdery mildew uh, once you start watering overhead. I use a drip tape. Again, it's a, it's an investment, but for me, um, if you've been gardening for a while, it's well worth the investment. Um, and that's kind of how we've gardened. Like we've been here for six years. And so the first year I definitely did not have drip tape. I did not have plastic. You know, I was just going with what I had. And then each year I invest a little bit more 
into the garden space and spend a little bit more time perfecting it. Um, and, and I have, I will tell you when I built my first raised beds, I built them out of, um, cedar. And then I used a metal around like a metal roofing around the outsides. Um, and metal does help heat up the soil similar to a container. And so it did help um, but I put my beds way too close together. I like could hardly even fit a wheelbarrow between them. I gardened in it for two years and was like, I can't do it anymore. And I ripped them all out and then started all over again. Um, the other thing that I think is important to note, Belinda has bark all around her raised beds um, and that keeps weeds from growing up and then uh, dropping their seeds into your raised beds. Um, I did not have that. And so again, that pasture grass grew up really high. And unless I was really good about weed whacking around it, I, I ended up with raised beds that were just filled with weeds um, all the time. And so I had to start completely over. And so when I did start over, I put down plastic around the outside and then I cover that with gravel. Um, and so now weeding is a lot easier. Um, I have a question or a, a comment on where you place your beds too. I think that a lot of people want to start just kind of placing little edible plants around their yard, just kind of, you know, in random locations or, you know, spread out the space that they have. And I think that that's totally fine at the very beginning, but I think you will, unless you're much more careful with attention to detail than I am, you will quickly forget how to care for each plant or remember to water that thing, you know, oh, in the back side yard, we have rhubarb and oh, in the front left corner, we have some chives. Um, I have a little bit of that going on in my yard and I will tell you, those plants do not get taken care of the same way that they would in a garden. So really, if you can allocate like a set space for where you're trying to do your garden, I think it's going to make it a lot easier to be able to implement these systems like watering to actually have success. I, I think unless you're doing like a full on natural like hugel culture, which is something that our, our brother, that's how he gardens where he's mimicking a forest floor in his garden. I mean, that's a very different level of gardening that is really cool and a lot of people are into. But if you're beginning, just make it easy on yourself and put everything that you're growing kind of in the same space and set up your however you're going to water in that space. And then, you know, trying to, you know, control kind of the factors that you can control will help you get a better start, I think. I would agree. <laughs> I have a garden area and it's right next to my greenhouse, which is right next to my garden shed. I have all of my tools in one space. And so I know that when I go out there, I have everything that I need and I can just kind of hang out in that space and do gardening. Okay, again, that was Venice and Belinda of Simple Goodness Sisters with this week's mini-sode for the Maker Mom podcast. Again, my name is Katie Freeman, and every week we have an episode, a new episode on Fridays of the Maker Mom podcast, where I interview a mom about her journey to becoming a maker in the hectic life of being a mom. And I would love to see you join me over there on the podcast and the regular uh, episode. Um, and until next week's mini-sode, I hope you have a good week.